Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, welcome to another video of mine covering the Mark II Cynic in this case. This is basically a video on how to use an app called Ono Reno. Now it works for the Cynic, the Mark II, I know that for a fact because it's worked on this beast. There are other Renaults that it also will work for and I assume that what I'm going to show you will work in that respect as well. However, it's down to you how far you go with that. If, if you own a Renault, Kajar, Capture or any of the other of the range, knock yourself out. Basically, there's a few things you need, a few specific things and also some, I want to say knowledge, but capability with mobile phones and routing and Android in general. I don't know about iPhone. I'm not interested in iPhones. I can't help you with iPhone. If you have a way of doing it through iPhone, cool, awesome. This will focus on Android and Android only. Now, one of the first things you're gonna need is one of these. Now, I have two of them here, and I shall explain why. This one uses the newer standard, the 1.6 or the, the one that doesn't work basically. So this, although it has been a very, very useful little piece of hardware, has helped me with many, many problems on some of my other cars that I've had in the past, it is useless. What we need is this one. Now, this is a ProScan Automotive. Got it off eBay for a few squid. And the reason we're using this one is because it uses the older Bluetooth protocol, the 1.2 or 1.3, I think it is, that Ono Renault requires. So this is important. You have to have a Bluetooth device, a Bluetooth dongle with 1.3, 1.4, the older one. You must have the older one because nothing else will talk to these cars. No idea why, it's a Renault thing. Next thing you're gonna need is a mobile phone. Now excuse the state of this thing, but it is my, um, shall we say backup. I use it for messing around. And what we're gonna need on this phone is two things. The first of which is this, Lucky Patcher. See this program? Lucky Patcher. That's the first program we're gonna need. And of course, Ono for Reno. You can download both of these individually through Google using APK websites. You will not find these apps on the App Store. They do not exist on the App Store. Don't bother looking. So, we start by installing both apps, Ono for Renault and Lucky Patcher, get them both installed, nice clean installation. We'll open that up, you'll see that blah blah, none of this matters just yet. But first, before you use Ono for Renault, you're going to open up Lucky Patcher. Focus, focus, thank you. You're going to find Ono Diagnostics for Renault. Go to Menu of Patches. And see this one here, Support Patch for In-App and Level Emulation, LVL Emulation. You'll make sure these two top ones are ticked, Support Patch for LVL Emulation and Support Patch for In-App Emulation. And then click Apply. And what this is going to do is patch the app. I've already, I'll do it again. New, 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 new. I'll do it again, Apply. Sorry, perspective's a bit difficult. So it's going to patch the app. It takes a few minutes, depends how good or bad your Android device is. In the case of this phone, it's kind of slow. So, <clears throat> and depending on which version of this uh, Lucky Patcher app you have, it may ask, do you want to update the app itself? While you're in the middle of a patch, no, you don't. You can do that after. So just tap no if that comes up. Okay, this is what's going to come up. Patch pattern N1, success. Patch pattern N2, success. Patch pattern N3, failed, but doesn't matter. 28% luck, doesn't matter. Now you can choose whether you want to launch it or whether that's up to you. But before we go to Ono, you will need to look into getting your Android device rooted to allow you to have Super User installed. There is a wealth of information online through Google. You can search and find all the information you will actually need to root an Android handset. Bear in mind that root stops, I believe Android 9 was the last version where root was fully possible. So anything recent, recent handsets with uh, Android 10, the new UI system, will probably not have root capability yet. 
best to go with something older like this. This is an old S4, so this is perfect because it only has Android 6 on it. So your route's done. Then you do your lucky patcher, get Ono for Reno patched, then open Ono for Reno. And up at the top, you see the little uh, trolley icon? If you just tap that, it may not work on mine because I've already done it. Oh, there we go. See how it says purchased, subscribed? If you look at the prices, you'll notice the three month one should be 15 quid, I believe, in the UK, 15 British pounds. And the one year subscription, I think, was £60 or something like that. You'll see it says purchased. All you're going to do is tap and it will bring up a dialogue box asking, would you like to try and get this for free? All the options should already be set. All you have to do is press yes. Don't tick or change anything. Just press yes and it will do it for you. And it will allow you access, full access to this app. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you my dashboard, first of all. Hold for 10 seconds for diagnostics mode. And you'll notice on my dash, service light's lit. Check engine light's on, but that's because the ignition's off. And if I scroll through, I have no messages. The reason the service light's lit is because the check injection light, the check injection message comes up when the engine's running. But I'm going to show you this app working, basically, to get rid of that service message. So, on our friend the Mark II, excuse my vaporizer, down here is our lovely OBD port. Chunk that in there. Now we're going to Bluetooth and connect. We should find it straight away. Checking OBD. This is where you get stuck with the other version. Uh, we need to connect. Okay. I mean, sorry, this phone sometimes takes a minute to load. So I'm, if the video jumps, it's because I'm pausing it to let it do its thing and then catch it up. Anyway, on this, we will connect to the engine. Now, I have no idea why with this app, even if you choose diesel, which in my case, it is a diesel, for some reason. So we're already in diagnostics mode. So we will connect to the module. Yeah, even you can see there it says petrol. I have no idea why it does that. But anyway, error codes. And there should be a couple. Yes, glow plug and this unknown one. Now, before with this app, before the paid version, before you had it, if you tapped on one of these, you couldn't see the information. However, this phone is useless and doesn't like to show things. Okay. It might work on the gold plug one, actually. Okay, maybe not. Never mind. You can actually... Um, originally, and I'm trying to remember because it was a few days ago for me now, it had the codes but you only saw the first letter and the first number of each code. The rest of the code was actually blanked out with stars. Now you can see them all. Another thing you couldn't do was this. Three dots. Watch the service indicator erase stored codes. Uh, yes. Dink. Gone. And it'll read, and it'll tell me now, none. Now, each module can be connected to. So that was the engine. I've got the ABS module. Shows you all the information about it there. The VDIAG, the hardware number, yada, yada, yada. You can also check your error codes. And I have, oh look, rear right wheel speed sensor circuit, rear left wheel speed sensor circuit. I didn't actually know I had those. Hmm, something to look into. Well, I'll be. Okay, let's see if I can.
That explains a lot. Okay, okay, we'll erase those stored codes. There we go. Now we're going to go back again, and that was the AV. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, these are the other vehicles. Cleo 2, Megan 2, Sonic 2, Laguna 2, Espace 5, Modus 1, Kanga 1, Logan 1, Cleo 3, PH1, depending on which one you want to work on. But this is the Renault-specific version. We've even got the airbags. I know my airbags are okay. UPC. Oh, it's so hard to press. I can't see. There we go. UPC, the engine bay. That's the engine bay fuse box, which is hiding just down there underneath the battery. Or beside the battery even. Let's see what this says. It should bring up the glow plug code. No, no stored codes. Good. So we'll go back. You can also connect to the live sensors on certain ones. Uh, depending what data is available. The diesel, it's kind of funny sometimes, fail to read the modules. The diesels are kind of funny about that. They don't like to access the sensors when the engine's not running. But it should be okay for the petrol. Let's connect to the UCH. See what that says. Let's see some error codes. Are there any? Somehow I don't think there are. Reading stored codes. No stored codes found. Good. Right. Now, now that we've done that, we shall disconnect. Now, I'm going to start it up. Mine will pop the injection error back up again because there's something wrong with my injection computer. I need to get to the bottom of that. But... See, straight away it came up. So we'll just scroll through. Oil level, check injection. I, I, I don't know. I can't figure it out. I can't figure out why that comes up. But, because we now have access to it through this, we can connect again. No, no, no. Apologies for my useless thumbs. It's kind of hard to do this and look at the screen at the same time because of the delay. So we're going to connect to the engine. Oh no, I forgot. Tried diesel alt connection. Sometimes that works. There we go, diesel alt connection. Right. Yeah, if diesel doesn't work, try diesel alt connection. Let's see what error codes come up now. The glow plug one will come up, I know that. That's the one bringing up, yeah, that's the one that's bringing up that injection fault. Now, you can't, I don't believe you can erase codes while the engine's running um, because of the way these engines work. So I wouldn't suggest, yeah, unable to erase from module because the engine's running. That's, yeah, can't do anything with that. But anyway, Still working on this feature. Life sensors? Oh, okay. Life sensors doesn't work on the uh, engine module. I thought it did. Uh, the do, 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 do. electronic parking brake, the most common one on these cars. So you pull your emergency release because your car gets stuck. You reset it and you need to reset your code. You can do that in here. That does actually work with this one. I've done that with this one. So no stored codes found, but. Yeah, and I believe you can monitor the voltage on the parking brake as well. There you go. Battery voltage. I am currently one degree tilted forward slightly. Braking force. That's the braking force. The top one you see there is the front. The bottom one's the rears. And clutch position. If I put the clutch down. 79%, that's that's not much, is it? I need to have a look at that. Oh, there you go, 220, 78. Uh, lock and switch, motor current, vertical tilt, no idea. Fault status, no fault. Braking status, inactive. Vehicle speed, okay, my wheel speed's showing 0.01 kilometers an hour. My wheels are not removing, okay. Doors are closed, ignition's on, ignition gear stick reverse position, shift is in progress. Gear stick position type one, type two, engine speed. Shows you a lot of things. Some really useful information. Let's just if I go left and first. 
second, neutral, third, neutral, fourth, neutral, fifth, neutral, sixth, neutral, reverse. <laughs> Amazing. Gear stick reverse position, no. Yes. No. Amazing. So yeah, there's lots of information for this. Uh, obviously that's not just the electronic parking brake, that is covering quite a few other things as well on the rear half of the vehicle. Uh, if we go to the... slide the phone down the dashboard, now you see why it's so damaged. Connect to the... I am all fingers and thumbs today. Engine bay fuse box, live sensors. There should be some on this, I believe. Nope, failed to read, okay. So you can play around with it yourself, you can figure out which sensors your car does and doesn't have, which menus you can and can't access, but basically this will allow anyone and everyone to get rid of those annoying messages. So that's the end of the video, thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that rubbish that everyone seems to do on YouTube, and see you guys in the next one.